So um, <clears throat> let me just start by uh, a disclaimer. As a public servant, um, I have to make sure that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that what I say here as a private citizen does not represent the opinions of my employers. And that includes, of course, the uh, Michigan State University and the state of Michigan. I, I, I have two employers. Like every American, I have two jobs so to, to be able to put anything on the table. Um, <laughs> um, I blame my, my children. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, um, um, so I really wanted to uh, meet with the, you know, the, the, the office of Elisa Slatkin. I must say that Slatkin, I must say that this is the first time that a politician actually made an effort to, 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 to reach out to, to me. Um, as, a, as an immigrant, uh, I am usually ignored. Um, so I was surprised to, of Representative Elisa Slatkin. Um, um, and, and so I was kind of energized to reach out to your office to, to, to really uh, basically publicize this new idea um, as an economist, yeah, um, as an economist, I know that we need to invest in infrastructure. And as an, an economist who's uh, who's uh, a civil servant and 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 an in, uh, you know higher education instructor, I am familiar with these issues, Nazi states by all over the world. And when I see that. Many of the, new, uh, the uh, newly developed countries are surpassing us in investing in infrastructure. It, it worries me uh, because this is my new home. So I, <laughs> I you know, forget about, about where I, I came from. Forget about, this is my new home. This is where my children are, are. This is where my grandchildren are growing up. And so I, 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 I worry about what, what is happening to our nation uh, in terms of uh, everything and, 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 and especially infrastructure. And so um, I really hope that, you know, um, you, uh, uh, um, uh, Elisa is gonna win and is gonna, is gonna, you know, get behind this bill and uh, get it going. I'm gonna show in a minute. So um, you did tell me, Austin, that you, you are familiar with the, the global idea of the National Infrastructure Bank. Um, and so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. And if we have time later, you know, uh, all these experts that are here can give you more information. Um, but um, it's modeled on after the reconstruction finance corporation of the finance corporation of the 1930s. Um, and its goal is to lend, not to spend, to lend to communities to invest in infrastructure. And that includes the, the maintenance and upgrading of, of the infrastructure, upgrading of, of the infrastructures that we have today. So that includes roads, bridges, uh, freight, uh, freight corridors, mass transit, electricity grids, schools, dams, levees, waterways and ports, airports, rail, drink parks and recreation, and hazardous and solid waste. But it also uh, can uh, land communities to invest in new areas of infrastructure, such as high-speed high rail, railroads, um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, broadband access, uh, affordable housing, renewable energy supergrid, and major way, uh, water management projects uh, to com combat flooding and bring water to dry regions. So th all those are things that you know the the bank can do. And you know, I'm pretty sure we have more time at the end to really talk about it. 
uh, Arfeka, uh, Stu, um, and Stan really uh, know more about this than I do. So they can actually chime in later than I do. So they can actually chime in later. And so really the, the, the whole big uh, question is, why is that, you know, as an economist for the state of Michigan, I've seen, I mean, I started in, uh, working for the state of Michigan in 1998. And that was the time that the economy of the, the, the nation uh, was, was booming. Uh, the, the economy for Michigan was even ahead of the nation. We had the, we had the lower unemployment rate than the nation at that time. And we got hit by the first wave of recession in, 19, in 2000, right? The end of 1999, 2000, we got hit by that first wave of the recession. And Michigan was even hit harder than the nation because the wave came against manufacturing. That was the, the, the time that NAFTA was in full gear and many companies took advantage of that to outsource and move either south or outsource there to, to places that we are now uh, blaming for, for everything that is happening to us, you know, China, right? We, we moved our production to China to take advantage of low cost labor. labor um, and now we're blaming it for doing what we actually, for doing what we actually did ourselves. But anyway, Michigan lost a lot of jobs, as you can see with this uh, chart. If we if we you know the indexed to 2000, you can see that by today uh, our labor force is still 5.5.5 percent below 2000, which represent about 285,000 people, working people that we've lost, right? Um, the number of, un, uh, of employed, so, so the number of jobs that we've lost is below 2,000. That's about almost half a million jobs that we've lost since 2000. And the number of in, unemployed, the people who are still looking, who are looking for jobs has gone up by 212,000, since 112,000, since 2000. So these are people who are, you know, who can't who can find job, who say, you know, I am able, I am available, but I can't find a job. 212,000 today, okay? So um, re recent, uh, recent, in April, just April, we lost 347,000 people, working people. So work, workforce dropped by 347,000. We lost one, uh, a quarter of our employment. So, so, you know, we have usually around 4 million, 900 uh, jobs in Michigan. We lost 1,225,000 of those just in one month. Uh, you can imagine as somebody who works, Jen, as somebody who works with these numbers, actually my job is to actually collect these numbers, estimate these numbers. It was a hell in April. Uh, um, and the number of unemployed uh, 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 soared to almost 900. The unemployment rate was up by 19.6 percentage points, right? So if I look today in September, compared to February before the pandemic, we are still 75,000 below, uh, our workforce is still 75,000 below the level of February. So that means these are people who are out of the labor force. Right, um, and the number of jobs that we still have to fill is almost 300,000, so 295,000. And the number of people who are saying, hey, and the number of people who are saying, hey, we, we want jobs, 219,000 today in, 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 in September. So these are people that we don't even know that they're gonna get jobs because 
the economy has, you know, you know, businesses have opened, uh, you know, hired more people. There are more businesses that have closed that are now coming back. And so we need to find a solution. And this is, uh, you know, um, looking at looking at the uh, really payroll jobs, non-farm payroll jobs uh, dropped by almost a million, 989,700. Uh, construction uh, dropped by 73,000. Manufacturing 174,700 at this time round, 225,500. Today, if I compare to February, September, February, we are still 375,000 uh, payroll jobs. Um, uh, construction has gone up a little bit to, and has gone up a little bit to, you know, seven, 17,200, but, you know, construction is a seasonal, you know, uh, industry. So we expect that. Um, um, manufacturing is still 55,000 below February and leisure and hospitality is still about 115,000 below, below February. Um, uh, so we still have uh, uh, a lot to do. Um, so beside that, the uh, Society of Civil Engineers has done an assessment of Michigan's infrastructure. M most of this is not new, uh, but it's always good to put a number on these things so that we know how serious th these, these issues are. So this, these issues are. So this society gives us a D plus uh, on our infrastructure. So anybody who has been in Michigan uh, knows this. The governor is doing a little bit is, you know, she's really fighting to get something done. Um, every time I see a, a new pavement, I'm, I am excited. I drive on and, you know, just, just to feel the new pavement. <laughs> But we know, so the 21st Century Infrastructure Commission determined an additional $4 billion annually is in Michigan's infrastructure. That's a lot of money. It gives us a D minus on roads based on a 2016 assessment, 23% of Michigan's 122,000 36 miles and 36 miles of public roads are in poor condition. Uh, bridges are, are given a C minus, uh, 1,234 uh, 1, bridges or 11% of the total uh, uh, state bridges are in assessment. Transit is given a C minus because of reliability and availability uh, to many being inadequate. Um, we have drinking water, drinking water um, that is given uh, a D minus, I mean a D, um, even though we are surrounded by, by Great Lakes, um, um, we are still facing uh, a problem of uh, drinking uh, contamination is an issue. We have an aging treatment distribution system. Um, and uh, it's estimated that we need $13.05 billion uh, uh, in drinking water infrastructure needs over the next 20, 20 years. So we have the example of Flint, of course. So when we talk about Michigan and water, we can't ignore Flint. Uh, residents of Flint are still waiting for some miracle to happen. Um, uh, water waste, C, 2.07 billion, $0.07 billion in waste, uh, wastewater infrastructure needs over the next 20 years. Stormwater, a D minus. Uh, dams is another, um, uh, we are given a C minus. Um, we have one, 72 high hazard dams. Uh, we know that we had a, an issue uh, in May 
of two dams on the, the, the uh, Titabasi, Titaboasi River, Boasi River in mid, Midland um, um, are giving up. Um, uh, I, I think we are still cleaning <laughs> the damage that they caused in, in that area. Um, schools, we have 1.3 billion gap in estimated school, cap, estimated school capital expenditure. So CNBC gives us a C minus rating. Uh, and so the solutions, we are just still in partial solutions for now. So um, uh, our faker uh, sent me this um, article that talks about which in Michigan we know, uh, we are familiar with this, but it talks about the, the public bond uh, issue Governor, Governor Gretchen Winmer issued because she wanted to get around the uh, Republican legislator that was blocking her proposal of a 45 cent per gallon uh, fuel tax. Um, and as you can imagine, they, uh, this article uh, closing that bond of just at 80, $800 million, which is nothing because just one portion of I-496, uh, for those of you who knows uh, Michigan, uh, Michigan or Lansing, that's just a few miles. That's like five miles each way. And it's costing $60 million. So $800 million is nothing. Um, so uh, she's uh, thinking about $3.5 billion um, of, of bonds, um, which again, um, which again is now gonna be done that really that of it's 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 nothing. It's it's really a, a drop in 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 a in bucket. So we think that a lasting solution, and we know that you know we there are studies that have been done. So a lasting solution is that's the National uh, Infrastructure Bank, uh, and we have a bill. Um, HR 6422, that is in, 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 in the Congress. Um, uh, uh, our faker can talk about that or, uh, the current update of that. So uh, just in a summary, it would invest $4 trillion. I think we are thinking of upgrading this to $5 trillion, uh, given the new estimates of the American Civil uh, Society of Engineers. Uh, Society of Engineers. Um, so, but is, it, it is to finance infrastructure projects all across uh, 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 the United States. And in, in doing so, it's going to create up to 25 million new great paying jobs, great paying jobs, and re-employ Americans who permanently lost their jobs on account of the COVID pandemic that we just talked about, creating the quick, quickest path out of our current economic crisis. So if we are able to pass this in the next, let's say, <laughs> we will be in a new era of economic uh, prosperity. Um, so this bank will create no new federal debt, will, will, requ will require no new taxes, and therefore, we think, and therefore, we think, uh, once the storm of political uh, whatever uh, elections is over, it has really a great chance of becoming a law. So let, uh, uh, just uh, uh, to, 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 to really focus on Michigan, uh, the expected share, expected share of spending in Michigan to finance roads, bridges, transit, school, electricity grids, dams, uh, and all the things that I talked about is, is, is as follow. Um, so we have for all the, the, uh, the state um, is $4 trillion. Michigan will get about $102 um, uh, um, out of that. Um, and that will create 637,836 jobs, new jobs in Michigan. 
So that means in Michigan. So that means we will we'll employ all those people that, that we've lost in the pandemic, which is now about 200, or let's say 300,000, right? And create even more. You know, all those people that gave up what we call the out of the labor force, the garage workers, are going to come back into the workforce and we're going to employ them. And we know that it's true because in many areas, such as Detroit City, uh, the labor participation rate is 50%, uh, uh, you know, at, at best, 50%. So that means percent of people, work, you know, capable people that just have given up looking for jobs in, in many areas of, of the state, you know, Detroit being one, you know, one good example. So um, new areas um, that, um, that, that of investment includes uh, Chicago uh, hub network, as you can see, that links um, uh, Detroit to Ann Arbor, to Kalamazoo, and then to Chicago. And I believe yesterday um, uh, during the, uh, uh, net, uh, the regular bank um, uh, webinar that we do every, every week, uh, somebody from Ohio talked about actually adding a leg uh, from Toledo to Detroit to really, uh, you know, have that uh, state, uh, you know, you can imagine going from, you know, from, you know, Toledo to Detroit, that would be a good, a good way to link um, the two states. And I, I believe they even have made, um, uh, have done a, 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 a benefit cost analysis of that leg. Um, and they find that, um, and they find that it's it's, it's going to be the good thing with all these things, and 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 um, uh, other people can come in in a minute. Is many of these projects are uh, the studies are showing that they will be self sustaining making money for the federal government. So it's not something that we're going to spend and worry about how we're going to pay it back. This is something that is actually going to make money as it creates even more more, more jobs for the, for the households. It's going to be creating more, more jobs for the, for the households. It's going to be creating money for the government itself. So it's a win-win, right? Um, so as I said at the beginning, to, and I will, I will stop there after this, I have... Uh, a couple of do documents here that I can share with you, uh, Austin. Uh, I have a quick summary of the National Infrastructure Bank. I have a list of endorsers of the bill. And, and just as a parenthesis, just as a parenthesis, I learned yesterday that Debbie Dingle is a co-sponsor co of this bill, which is, you know, big, big, big to me, a big, um, you know, a big news because I know how big that name is in Michigan. So, anyway, so that's that's what I have. Questions you can ask, and they can they can they can help me answer those questions. <laughs>